Welcome Bent Riders around the world. My name is Gary Solomon and you're watching the Laid Back Bike Report. We are very glad to have you all with us today. We're kind of glad that uh, even I made it today because it was close. Uh, let me tell you a little bit about what we've got coming up on today's show. A couple of really uh, interesting guests that I think you're going to enjoy. Uh, first of all, David Brandenberger is with us from Melbourne, Australia. And we have author Susan Straley from Inverness, Florida. So stay tuned. We're going to tell you all about those folks. Uh, they're going to have uh, presentations to give you and tell you all about what they do. Uh, but I want to, for a minute, if I could uh, get your attention and have you subscribe to our YouTube channel. Uh, that's where you find all of our videos. And if you look in the upper right-hand corner, you'll see a little eye that will lead you to uh, our website, actually, and you'll find all the information there. It will also have a link to our YouTube channel. And uh, always in the lower right-hand corner, you'll see the little uh, laid-back bike report logo, the little green logo. If you click on that, that will take you directly to our YouTube channel. And there you can subscribe if you would, and if you haven't already. And there's a little um, there's a little bell next to the subscribe button that will uh, give you notifications when we go live. Today's show is sponsored by TerraCycle, makers of exquisite recumbent parts and accessories for your bent. Trailside.com, don't say bikes, so find recumbent bike shop in the Withalacoochee Trail in Floral City, Florida. Cruise bike, designed for the cyclist who wants to ride further, climb faster, and adventure more. All cruise bikes and frame sets ship free in the USA. <clears throat> Lightning cycles, the aerospace design and race across America record owning recumbent you've always wanted. All right. All now, right. Bent fans are there he is. Well, host is back. I'm back. I'm back. Thank you, Denny, for you whatever bet. that was that while I was gone. So, uh, yeah, I'm having some sort of electrical difficulties here. So if I leave quickly again, Denny, I'll, just take over, will you? I'm going I to will. I'm, I'm following the script. We'll, we'll go with it. <laughs> Thank you very much. Sorry, folks. All right. Let's introduce those panelists who just uh, tried to save me there. Uh, first of all, from Raymond, Mississippi, our media guy, it's Trey Burgoyne. And your inline mute is working well. And you're out of line, I guess is what I would say. <laughs> yes, yeah, sorry about that. <laughs> we, were, right. we were feverishly uh, running around. Okay. Well, good to have you with us, Trey. Let's move along to Floral City, where our laid back sports desk and temporary uh, host is uh denny voorhees hi denny hi gary we're uh we're here 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 for you buddy <laughs> i appreciate it you. and you know uh denny doesn't actually have a sports report today so uh we're looking for a little something extra for him so that was it for there was in, my buddy. 30 seconds of fame all, all right let's uh let's move on to colorado springs where we'll find larry seidman who uh is here uh taking on the director duties today because it's past lars's bedtime i think right now larry great to have you with us great to be here and uh yeah that's it uh do we get uh how about uh how about larry varney in cold spring yeah take it larry how you doing <laughs> hi doing fine um still connected <laughs> yeah so, that, anyway, which, glad which is more than here. i could say a few minutes ago i appreciate uh -huh. that all right <laughs> all right folks let's uh let's move on and see if we can get anything actually done today mm -hmm. on the show uh first of all uh we'll introduce our first guest uh this uh, gentleman is a Swiss adventurer traveling the world on his Azub trike, pulling a long trailer covered in solar cells. He is a photographer. He shoots great video. He plays the guitar and he sings. He, uh, he, his engaging and friendly personality has served him well throughout his current journey through Europe. Uh, he's also been through Asia and he's uh, we find him all the way in uh, melbourne australia as i mentioned earlier so bent riders please meet uh david brandenberger hi david hi folks thanks it is great to have you with us today uh david we're, let's start a little bit with uh if we could with a question about your background and then we're going to go through some slides that you uh, gave to us and you can talk about uh, your current journey uh, i was wondering um why was it you decided to undertake this this tour that you're on right now? What uh, what got you started, and what was the idea behind it? Well, um, the idea was um, 
uh, last time I was uh, traveling in South America, I was uh, traveling by uh, as a backpacker by bus. And um, uh, the next time, that was uh, about one year uh, long. And then the next time I figured out I can do just uh, as long as I can or just open end. Uh, but I didn't want to go by public transport. So uh, I choose the bike because it's uh, more env environmental friendly. But uh, then I see all my luggage that I have. And uh, that, uh, that was just a little bit too big, too much for uh, a bike to, to, tr to drag all the way. So I thought it would be good to have a motor in the bike. Uh, but to charge the battery, I, I need to, to have something. So I uh, came up with the idea of solar panels. And um, so that's how it looks. The, right. And so the, the solar the, panels and the trike and uh, how did you, it, it turned, it's not a bike, it's actually a trike, right? Can you tell us a little bit about your trike? Just the trike itself. Um, yeah, the trike itself, it's... Um, kind uh what you can buy like that we just uh, add the front part in the in the front uh there is a, a second motor uh because uh, in the, the normal ones uh they don't want to run below 10 kilometers an hour so we had uh, one that can go from four to eight kilometers an hour and here okay. you see all my mm -hmm. uh, huge stuff of uh of luggage that i have Right. And so this is an Azub, right? As I mentioned, the, the trike itself is an Azub, a Czech uh, trike. Why did you, um, before we get going on these slides too much, I I'm really want to uh, kind of hone in a little bit here. Uh, so you needed to do a trike instead of a bike because you wanted the stability to pull this trailer. Is that why you chose it? Um, yeah. Uh, the thing is, uh, my first um, attempt was... Uh, was a little bit failed because uh, I I choose kind of a rickshaw thing and that was uh, a trike or yeah, a three wheel thing as well. So I I was just uh, continuing in uh, uh, looking for a trike. So um, and then I came to that and uh, and the recumbent is is way more comfortable for long tour long yeah long distance touring. Okay, that makes sense. And let's get one more big question out of the way, if we could, too. So um, do, you, do you have some overriding re reason for taking these tours on? Are you trying to accomplish something? Or are you trying to, to pass a message on to the people that you see? Or is this just a, a, just a tour that you want to do for yourself? What's, what's the overarching uh, idea behind this? Um, well, it's a little bit all of uh, of them. Um, the, first of all, it, I, I do it just for myself because I, I want to travel the world. I want to see the world. Um, on the other hand, uh, yeah, I, I sure want to to get to know or want to show what solar panels or what uh, alternative energy can do, and uh, maybe get some ideas uh, of, uh, of for other projects or so that. That people can, um, if they see this thing, that they they probably start to have another idea or or start to uh, to to produce their own project, and that really happened. I mean, it, it's really fantastic to see uh, the reactions on the street. What I have. So it's great. So one of the big ideas then is to set an example uh, for being more sustainable and using solar energy and that sort of thing as you travel around, sounds like. So that's great. Let's go ahead now, if we can, and let's hone in a little bit on the actual vehicle that you're using. And uh, can you, I think this is, David, where you wanted to talk about uh, the build process and all. Do you want to start there? Yeah, uh, this is this is the second trailer that I had because um, I had to leave the uh, the first one that I got in, in Czech Republic, I had to leave that in, in uh, Iran. So in Uzbekistan, we built a new, a new one. And uh, I only could find a window frame factory, which is doing uh, something with aluminium. And so you see there is uh, everything was screwed together. And um, that is the third one, the third trailer, uh, while building uh, in uh, Darwin. 
because I always lost some screws on the way. And uh, so that's why I decided to have uh, built a new one. And um, this is all welded so that, that holds, uh, I hope, um, until the end of the trip. Okay. And uh, David, you tell you go ahead and tell Trey when you want to move on to the next slide and just go ahead and yeah. I'll just jump in if yeah. I have questions. Okay, go ahead. He's doing it by himself already. <laughs> <laughs> He'll wait for you. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah, so that is that is the second motor in the front that I talked about. Um, that uh, drives me up the uh, up the hills, up the steep hills because uh, it's it's way too heavy to uh, pull that uh, with own muscle power. So that's why I had to have uh, one in the front. And uh, yeah, that was the early start in uh, 2015 in Czech Republic, where I got the trike from. And uh, yeah, you see the panels, I can, I can uh, lift them up in one way. So I always have to find uh, space where I can park and uh, I have to um, park it like, that I, I can lift the, the panels in uh, the right angle to the sun. So, and yeah, I know somebody's so going to ask if I don't. So, how much energy are you getting out of those panels? You don't have to give me a wattage, but uh, is it enough to run for a day on those motors or a half a day? Or what, what kind of uh, power are you getting from those panels? Yeah, uh, speaking of wattage, is a 516 watt peak at 20 Celsius. That is always. Mm -hmm. uh, there's mm -hmm. a lot of factors, so it um, most of the time it uh, gives me enough power to run the whole day, and uh, then the next uh, in the next day I can I can just continue in, uh, on driving. So I I have to make some breaks between. I mean I don't have to, but I I just do some some for lunch and so okay so and here's time. a couple of questions david uh sorry to interrupt uh, one from uh, our other guest uh, susan straley asks uh she saw that picture with all of the, the the baggage that you had in in the trailer and it had a scale she's wondering uh, how large of a load are you carrying um uh i don't know it's it's uh it, the trailer is about 44 kilograms but it can be up to 120 kilograms at uh, at the end it just depends how much water and food i have to carry right and, um, yeah okay and uh and uh, ed miller's got a question on chat also uh he saw the picture of the of the panels being elevated can you ride that way or does it have to be down to ride no, it, on the right is it is flat down, so I cannot ride it like this. Uh, that is just for uh, in the brakes to catch the sun. Okay, thank you. Sorry to interrupt, David. Go ahead. Uh, do you want to go to the next picture? Or are you okay there? Or... Uh, yeah, you can move to the next picture. All right. So that 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 was my first host in. Um, Czech Republic, uh, her first uh, warm shower host, and uh, he's really he's still a good friend of mine. And uh, yeah, there was a steep, steep hill until to get uh, up there, so uh, we had to have it behind the uh, behind his car. So we had to drag it up because uh, not all uh, hills I I can. I, Sometimes it's it's just too steep. Too but steep. It, was, it was really fine up there. Yeah, next. So uh, I went to Germany and um, <laughs> played a guitar in front of the Reichstag just for fun. And uh, a friend of mine, he was doing some uh, video uh, that uh, that was not uh, that was not for. Giving, uh, getting money or something like that. It was just uh, for having a, a good photo shot. <laughs> oh. So then, um, yeah, I I didn't know how far I will go. So uh, with this with this all with this rake. So first, as I was in in Germany, um, I 
I cover about 100 k, uh, 100,000 uh, kilometers. And as I was in Greece uh, on this picture, I covered about 6,000 kilometers, and I was I was really happy um, because I yeah I don't know I didn't know how far I could go with this. Well, and uh, my journey went on to Turkey, so uh, I was uh, a little bit uh, surprised. The media uh, just got everywhere. Um, I had some journalists coming up to me, and uh, I ended up uh, broadcasting in uh, in the national TV. So they they send an article about me in the national. TV and uh, afterwards I got invitations all over the place so I, I met this friendly guy in the middle of Turkey and he was inviting me some months before I will really get there. So I've, I've noticed that this happens to a few other of our guests who tour around the yeah. world. Once, uh, once the word gets out and that something interesting then people start knowing that you're going to be someplace and you're almost a celebrity when you get there. Is that the case? Yeah, that's a kind, a kind of a case, yeah. It is really like that. Do you see the picture, David? Uh, yeah, yeah, sorry, my, my computer is a little bit spinning around, so I, I have picture <laughs> Yeah, now. I'm well um, acquainted with technical difficulties myself, yeah, my friend, it's yeah, okay. Go ahead. That's the case today. Uh, all right, uh, crossing the... Uh, desert in Azerbaijan. Uh, I broke the, one of my uh, axle in the trailer, and it was a little bit um, scary in the middle of the desert breaking uh, an axle. And I, I didn't had a spare one, but I was lucky enough to uh, that I broke it just in that. Uh, uh, it was just a kind of a museum there. And the next village, they had a, fa uh, a company that they melt old metal, and uh, they could made a new uh, a new one for me in about four hours. So I was I was really lucky up there. Uh, now I carry a lot of uh, axles to 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 change, and then I I went to to Iran. And made, made, I made only friendly people there. There was really no no problem at all. David, can I ask you a question about riding along the roads, uh, as many roads as you have ridden? And you talked about it being a little scary along the side there. I'm, I'm wondering, that's a relatively wide load, certainly a long one. Did you feel safe everywhere? Did you did you feel like this this uh, with the trailer and the trike that it felt a little bit scary at times on particularly narrow roads, for instance? Oh yeah, there there are some some kind of very narrow roads and um, and some careless drivers, but you can you can have them everywhere. The most uh, uh, most of all, it's it's really not that problem. I. I figured out that I have less problem than uh, if you try um, drive with a normal packed bike, because uh, uh, this thing is is really visible. And now I have even two flags on the back, and uh, uh, and it's it's just only one meter wide, but it's lo it looks wider than it is. Yeah, yeah, it's quite long. And and it's so it's a, it's a weird thing. So people uh, have more distance to 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 look at that thing. They say, "What what the heck is that?" So it's yeah. Okay, it's and a, while I have you, unusual. while I have you, uh, yeah, while I'm asking this question, let's go back to the chat. Um, Harold Bergman is on chat and asks, "Are you charging batteries or are you using power directly from the solar panels?" Um, yes, I charge the battery. Um, there is a, is a battery uh, on the back of the trike uh, that I, I charge. Uh, it's not charging directly. So I, even if I will run out of, uh, of power, I can uh, charge it somewhere 
um, on a PowerPoint. Okay. Yeah. And are, Ed you, Miller, are you carrying? Uh, go ahead. Go I, ahead. I was going to ask: Are you carrying two batteries, or you just have one primary battery? No, it is just one. Okay. And uh, Ed Miller asked another question, which maybe we'll wait till the end. He asked about if you've had any issues uh, with the panel output. Now, I think you have had some issues with the solar cells. Let's save that to the end, and you could because I uh, we can talk about. It. I know this happened more recently. Maybe there's been others. Let's talk about any problems you might have at the end. So we will get back to that, Ed. And uh, okay, let's uh, continue on with the slideshow. Maybe. Okay. Yeah. There we go. So that's that's one of the friendly people in Iran, uh, really good friend of mine now, and uh, he's he's now yeah he's now in Germany somewhere uh, because he had to flee out of uh, the country, and um, yeah you you really meet a lot of, of friendly people and uh, and then uh, you're. You're friends with them all the time. Yeah, this is probably um, the perfect slide to talk is, about this. Yeah. Can you tell us? Yeah. Let's go. Let's go into more detail if you can. So, what's it like? Part of what you do is 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 showing off your technology, and you like to travel. But I'm guessing that uh, meeting people is a really important part uh, of what you. It sounds like that from what you've told us so far. How important is that to you? And how many friends have you made? Would you say in in your travels? Oh, I. I can't count uh, uh, how many friends I met. Uh, so I mean, that uh, this picture is uh, actually uh, I really wanted to make that to show the there's just a selection of uh, people I met in Iran that uh, I met people and not terrorists, and uh, that is really one thing that uh, I want to um, to show that uh, they are just ordinary people like you and me. And um, and they having fun meeting other people, and uh, that's just really amazing. That is that's wonderful. All right, let's move along. Yeah, yeah Kazakhstan was a little bit cold, as you <laughs> see. Uh, as I wake up in the morning, and uh, snow was all around. Uh, yeah, that was a that was a hard point. Yeah, and we, as we talked about, David, or a little bit uh, on our on our practice sessions, this really cuts down on the amount of solar energy you can collect when you have snow on it, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, that, uh, that doesn't uh, do anything, so I had to clean that uh, before I ride. <laughs> okay, let's move along. Yeah. Yeah, that happens as well. Uh, flat tires, and uh, that's the worst part to get out the the back wheel with the motor and the cables and and, and whatever. So yeah, first uh, I I had some uh, uh, tubes that are that that had two ends uh, that I didn't had to get the the wheel out. But that was uh, that was really uh, a mess. Oh, I've seen uh, those. So this, those are the David. Those are the tubes that are like a straight line, yeah. and you put it in yes, there. Yes, wow! And yes, did those did yeah. those work all right? No, no. I had about <laughs> three. I had about three flats in a day, and and that was the last time uh, that uh, I I just dismounted. The, and did it the, seem lumpy? Did yeah. you have a? Was it smooth going around? Even it seems to me it wouldn't be smooth going around. It, it was smooth, but the uh, the problem was that the ends, the two ends, they were scrubbing each other, oh. and they were, they were making making holes. For, uh, and yeah, bad design. <laughs> it was, it's a cr it was, interesting idea. Yeah, kind a good of a bad idea, design. but a bad design. Yeah, too bad. That would have worked well. Yeah. Okay, let's go back to the uh, to the slideshow, please. Yeah. So I went on uh, to China with this thing that is a. Uh, an old fire tower in in China, so you you see everywhere um, some old relics of the of the Chinese wall. Um, and I think we so, we have a couple of pictures of that. Yeah, yeah. So the the that are some slides, just uh, some like beautiful, uh, beautiful Kyrgyzstan and uh, beautiful Kazakhstan, uh, looking back to the mountains in in Kyrgyzstan. In, that was in spring, and then some sand dunes in China. Uh, yeah, or here we have the one of the restored uh, 
wall of China. The some, section of the wall, yeah, behind the heart yeah. there. Yeah. Yeah, so, some parts, they, they don't look that beautiful like this one so, uh, because uh, they're, they made just what they had, um, what they found been beside. So some parts were have been adobe walls and uh, some parts are were gone uh, in all that time. And that is uh, a nice uh, Chinese guy. Your family wanted him to have some pictures and uh, I could get the chance to have a picture of him. Is that at the wall? Is that behind him, the wall there? That is, uh, was uh, behind that wall. Yeah. yeah. Okay. On that wall, yeah. Yeah, and um, this is Annick, uh, one of uh, a solo triker as well. Uh, she she uh, has a, a trike with solar panels as well, and she was part participating in the sun trip in 2015. And uh, we met in Urimchi, where she was working as a, a teacher. Wait, uh, I'm sorry, where was this? In Urimchi in, uh, in China. In China, in, uh, okay. Xinjiang. Um, yeah, so that that was the the first uh, the first one that I I met that actually was driving uh, a rig like mine. And where uh, is she from, David? She is from Canada. Okay. Yeah. Very good. And uh, yeah, on the way, suddenly you see other trikers in uh, South Korea. As I was riding along, suddenly this guy uh, was riding next to me, and we had a really good time riding uh, uh, side by side to to uh, the next town. Yeah, that doesn't happen every day. I'm sure running into another triker on the on the road does it. No, that is really <laughs> uh, sometimes uh, you're really uh, amazed if you ah, oh, there's another one. Yeah, that's a shocker, <laughs> isn't it? Yeah. All right. So, yeah, that's um, a part of uh, Australia. Uh, so now you're sorry. in Australia here. That's a beautiful shot. Yeah, that's uh, one, uh, on a lake. And, okay, so, uh, yeah, you can tell yeah. us about this shot in particular, but I, 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 I'd like you to tell us, because this is the most recent now, what has it been like uh, traveling through Australia? I'm sure it was hot. Tell, describe for me what it's like to uh, tour on this rig through uh, Australia? Uh, oh, well, it's, it's just another country. It's just on the, uh, you have to drive on the left side. That's mm -hmm. the only, uh, <laughs> it's a little bit uh, uh, in the fir uh, first, you have to get used to. But um, yeah, as you see, there is a, a truck behind and everybody was asking about, is there no problem with the trucks? But um, it's really no, not a, a big problem. First one uh, will see that see me in the morning. They will radio the other ones that uh, they have to be aware there is a kind of a real thing on the route. And um, so and they're they on the it. lookout for you then, and you feel yeah, a little bit better yeah, about that. Yeah, yeah, it's very nice. Really no, no problem at all. And yeah, the, the famous pinnacles in uh, Western Australia. Beautiful. And. Uh, the yeah. Milky Way, huh? The Milky Way in in Australia. Yeah, that is that is really um, out in uh, in the countryside. You have no light uh, of of towns or whatever in the in the background, so you can really enjoy the sky. Were, were those the darkest skies with the brightest stars of any place that you were? Um. Yes, I guess. Yeah. That would be amazing. Okay. That's the last slide. Okay. Okay. <laughs> great. All right, uh, David. Great. That was very interesting. Now let's let's bring it up to date. I um, I uh, mentioned earlier about uh, the actual solar panels and and the energy system you have there. Now I know I think uh, I heard that you had some difficulties with the solar panels and such. Can you let, let us in a little bit about what has happened uh, on while you were in Australia and how you're remedying this? Um, yeah, the, the thing is, uh, because of um, the heat, uh, the panels um, they they bent um, because they're they're really um, only four millimeters uh, thick and, and very light. 
so uh, because they they bend, they had some cracks, and uh, yeah, the energy is not not working that that good anymore as it, as the, it was at the beginning. And uh, yeah, you see it on, uh, on yeah. The the, so the, when they bend like that, then the, the power starts to degrade, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And so what do you do? How how are you fixing this or what are you doing? Uh currently I'm looking for new panels. If I if I can find panels that uh can generate me more power would be better for sure. Um if I if I can find um other ones I have just to order the same ones again and uh we'll continue like that. Okay, so you'll replace what you can, I guess, while you can. Yeah. And yeah. so, um, can you give us an idea about what's coming up now? So you're in, you are in Melbourne. How long do you plan on staying there, and where do you go next? Well, first, I have to solve this problem with the um, with the panels and uh, and the motor and the battery and everything. I, ch I have to check everything. What is uh, wrong with the whole system? Uh, then I will go to Tasmania. Uh, but I guess without the trike, and uh, afterwards I will head on uh, probably to Canberra and uh, and Sydney. Okay, and after Australia, uh, what what do you have planned for that after that? Um, the big plan is uh, afterwards to New Zealand. When I don't know, it's just after after uh, after Sydney, and then uh, up to Alaska and all the way down to Ushuaia, but. Yeah, that is that is my my plan, and um, I have a motto. is It's an old saying um, that is describing a little bit uh, what I plan and what I what I gonna do. Uh, and it says, if you want to make God laugh, tell him your plans. <laughs> That is hilarious. And I, yeah, because who would do what you've done? And there are very few people who would. Now, when you travel uh, between continents, say, or, or between countries that are far apart, this is by boat, by ship. How, do you, how did you get from, from say, uh, China to Australia? How are you going to get to uh, North America? How, how are you going to do that? Yeah, I have, it, I have to load it in a, in a ship, in a cargo. Uh, transport container um, that is uh, unfortunately very expensive um, yeah that's that's how uh, how we I can transport it from one continent to the other uh, because there is a lithium battery in uh, mm -hmm. inside uh, they cannot uh, kind of fly so yeah. yeah yeah that's true and I guess uh, I'm sure people are going to want to know um, does someone have a question <clears throat> okay, um, I was going to ask about uh, finances. So, how are you financing this? Well, um, I don't have a sponsor, but I'm glad you asked. <laughs> I really am searching for uh, for sponsors. So, uh, if anyone wants a sponsor, I'm very glad to have some. And how can they contact you, uh, the sponsor? How will they get a hold of you? Uh, uh, by my website, there is a, a sub page uh, of sponsors. All right. uh, otherwise, I, I just finance that uh, by myself. Is all my savings uh, that I have, and uh, probably I have to go working in between before I can end that trade. Fair enough. Uh, we will, of course, put your contact information in the description below this video, so people will be able to uh, find you. I hope you do find a sponsor or two. That would be great. David, we really appreciate you uh, being on the Laid Back Bike Report, getting up so early in the morning, Monday morning there in uh, in Australia. We really appreciate that. If you wouldn't mind, could you uh, play us out for a minute or two? Uh, if you're on the road, I know you whip out that guitar occasionally and sing a song or two. What might you be singing or what might you be playing? Let's hear it. Uh, well, it's, it's just um, an exception of uh, the theme, theme, uh, the theme of my uh, solo track. Um, that's uh, um, yeah. What, what I uh, what I wrote. All right. <laughs> There it is, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> the solo trike theme. 
David that. Brandenberger, thank you so much for joining us on the Laid Back Bike Report. Please, if unless you need to take a quick nap after getting up so early, you're welcome to stay for the rest of the show and, and watch out uh, what's going on with the rest of the show. But we sure appreciate having you on the show today. Thanks. All right. All right, folks. Uh, I am still here. Uh, that is amazing in and of itself. Uh, yeah. David, it was great to have you. Yeah. Somebody uh, have a question or something? I keep hearing a little thing. Yeah, okay. Let's move along then to our next guest. Uh, I'm going to introduce her now. She and her husband, George, were cruising through the typical American life. They were happily engaged with their business and having fun riding trikes. Then that life took a nasty turn as she learned of George's diagnosis of Alzheimer's disease. This is a journey many have taken in the past and many of us will take in the future. Today, we'll talk about her book and the creative, heartwarming path she chose to follow. Folks, please meet the author of Alzheimer's Trippin' with George, Susan Straley. Hi, Susan. Hi. It's nice to see you. <laughs> it's so good to have you on from Inverness, Florida. Yeah, folks, I had a chance to actually meet Susan uh, a few weeks ago when uh, my wife and I were down. Uh, we were uh, in Inverness uh, at Trailside uh, Bikes, our, one of our sponsors, and Susan was there and uh, gave me one of these. So um, an amazing book, and I can't wait to hear what you have to say about it and uh, and and tell uh, telling our audience about your story. So let's go ahead and get to the slides if that's okay with you susan sure, and Dre, sure, pop that sure, up sure. there is the cover of the book and i'm going to let susan tell her story it kind of looks like we're bike touring on this cover of this book but we were taking a car but uh um people ask me how i started writing and i tell them it's because we were doing tours and i was keeping a journal on crazy guy in a bike so um and here's my slide changer bell <laughs> um, we rode uh, linear recumbents for 11 years, and then George in 2006 uh, got a trike, and he it took him two years to talk me into it, but one of the things was, well, I'll get a trike if we go on a bike tour, so he says, okay, so he semi-retired from his business, and I semi-retired from CAD drafting for his business, and we, uh, we got on our trikes and rode around Wisconsin. Uh, pulling all our stuff behind us. And in 2014, we were selling the business and he was starting to show symptoms I couldn't ignore of dementia, uh, calling the same customer twice a, twice in a day and things like that. So um, we got an offer on the business and um, this was the fifth offer we'd had and it, it's a very stressful time. So I says, you know, we've been wanting to ride our trikes from Wisconsin down to Florida where we had moved in 2008. Um, so let's do it. So we did, we uh, actually parked our van in Northern Illinois and we rode down to Florida. Where's the slides? <laughs> I think we want to show you occasionally, just a little bit okay, you know, okay. of a disembodied voice. So, okay, yeah, go ahead. We can um, say next slide. Probably don't. Yeah. If you hit that and, bell, um, it might just knock uh, Trey's. Yeah, that'll knock Trey's uh, headphones right off. So, okay. tell him next slide. <laughs> next slide. Next. Okay. So, as you can see in his uh, demented state, he had the. Uh, you know, he was also uh, an engineer. So I learned not to argue with me when he was mind was set. His mind was set. So. Um, he had packed two pair of blue jeans and a belt and all, and in the black bag is his pillow. And of course, with 10 wheels to keep inflated, I didn't mind the, having the full size pump with us. Um, so this is how we traveled and we were using motels. We weren't camping. So the stuff we brought along and that I had a burly behind me as well with a big bin. And he had a full size umbrella. Next slide. Uh, on this trip, if you go through the hills of Alabama, uh, we kept on having difficulty. And George used to work at Trailside Bike. It was Hampton's Edge at that time. He, so he was a geek. Uh, he knew how to repair a bike, but this chain would keep on sliding off the big 
cog and getting stuck between his spokes and the cog. Um, and it would take us an hour on these back roads in the middle of nowhere trying to get that chain dug out of there again. And it happened over and over again. I said, don't go into the low gear. <laughs> but he would forget and go into low gear. Um, so one of the times um, a utility person came and, and gave us a screwdriver. And that was the lever that we needed to help us out of this jam every time. <laughs> so that was good. This also happened on a later journey, and I didn't remember what the solution was, but I'm sure your um, writers know what the uh, solution is and what your readers know what the solution is. <laughs> it, the chain was too long. He had stretched out the chain, so we had wow. to have him remove the cogs. Um, he, uh, so he removed a couple, a few of the cogs, and um, but he didn't put do you mean a couple of the links the link. of the chain? Yeah, okay. yeah, a couple of the links. He removed a couple of the links from the chain, and it didn't get put back together right. And <laughs> it was catching and flipping off again. So, uh, yeah, we finally figured that out. The chain broke, and that's when we figured that out. <laughs> so I was learning mechanics as we were going on this trip. But anyway, uh, we made it to Florida. Uh, and he... He had a long that he wasn't going to go do this anymore. I'm not going to do this anymore. But as soon as we got back to Florida, he was ready to go again. So we did it again, but this time without the burlies, we just carried our stuff on uh, in bags. And we stayed in motels, and we went to St. Augustine, which is a shorter ride, but it was fun. Next slide. Oh, this was a St. Augustine trip. It was just one of the experiences that we had, dragging our butts through the water on a rainy day. Next slide. So in 2015, George was diagnosed with um, progressive uh, dementia. And this is a terminal illness. Uh, it could be possibly Alzheimer's. We thought it was uh, neutral pressure hydrocephalus was the original diagnosis, but um, he wasn't a candidate for a stint, which would drain some of the fluid out of his brain, brain cavity. Uh, so, um, so there we were stuck with that diagnosis and, um, uh, I didn't know what to do. I wanted to run actually. So I did. <laughs> we packed up the trikes and we, uh, seeing family and friends and going to the trike rally in Northern Idaho. Next slide. That's, um, next slide. So as you can see, as we've taken pictures, I'm always getting my foot caught in the picture. And I said, the heck with that. That's my signature <laughs> on my pictures is that dang foot is always in the picture. Next slide. Just to prove your point. <laughs> um, yeah. yeah. Next slide. <laughs> So then when we got to Roosevelt National Park, I told George, I, just, I think people need perspective. So we stuck our foot in the picture. They would start wondering what, what was wrong if they didn't see your foot in the picture. Yeah, right. <laughs> Next slide. Um, so it's a day before we arrive at Tot, the Trikes Only Rally or the Tons of Trikes Rally in uh, Wallace. I go riding around and George says, uh, you're missing something. <laughs> and uh, here I was missing the uh, the something, whatever it was, <laughs> I was missing. Gone from the front wheel. Um, a bike shop in Wallace is a cat trike dealer. So I thought, oh, we got a solution. But they don't sell that many cat trikes, and they didn't have any parts. So I arrived at the uh, trike rally in said, what was me to a few people? And they said, oh, we got the solution. Next slide. In Spokane, there's a uh, recumbent dealer and he uh, works out of his garage. And uh, there, it was a buzzing place. There were goats and chickens and three customers ahead of us. And it was just a fun place to hang out. He said, are you in a hurry? I says, no, we'll just hang out. <laughs> so we did. We got to try the hand cranks. Uh, bikes that he had on, on there, and it was just a lot of fun. Next slide. 
there we are at the trike rally. So the book that I wrote, uh, Alzheimer's Trippin' with George, is about this three-month tour we took with cars and, and trying out the different trails around the country. And as we traveled, his dementia symptoms started increasing, and I started sharing a little bit more about what we were dealing with. And uh, so that's how I started getting feedback saying, you got to turn this into a book. Susan, how did you share? In what so, manner did you? Um, oh, in the, the first tours were all on Crazy Guy on a Bike. This was in my blog, and that blog is um, susanstraley.com. Okay. And, uh, and so I was sharing it there, and uh, what I was getting was people that were going through the same thing with their spouse, and they were reading it and going, this is really helpful because I'm feeling some of the same things. Like, no, I don't want to do this. I don't want to be a caregiver. I'm a spouse. And oh, I'm going through a lot of grief because you're seeing your person that you love disappearing over time, little bits, and then they come back and then they go away. Um, so it was a good, uh, good, ex good experience, good feedback, and of course it built up my head. So I got a big head and decided to do a book after all. <laughs> Next slide. Uh, the trike rally was awesome. As you know, if you go to these rallies, you're, you just have instant parties where you stop along the trail and there's a bunch of people and you're all talking about bikes and tours and trails and places you've been and people you've met. And it's just a lot of fun. Next slide. One of the symptoms of dementia is that the person with dementia will shadow the person that they trust the most. So George shadowed me a lot, and that turned out to be very, very helpful riding trike because he was always behind me. He was following me around, and that was good. Next slide. Uh, but sometimes it didn't work out so good. Uh, I was riding along, and I went right into this crack, and you can see there's space just perfectly <laughs> for both wheels. And next slide. George followed right behind. <laughs> <laughs> what are the chances that you'd find two slots and cut out of the uh, cement? Yeah, like that. I know. Isn't that something? Yeah, that's amazing. Next slide. Oh, when we were in Boulder um, and I was doing the blog and I was doing some videos of our experiences and stuff. And uh, I got contacted by this Charles guy in Boulder and he was just excited to have trikers visiting his town because <laughs> there aren't that many trikers in Boulder, Colorado. And he uh, he found a way to get into contact with me through the YouTube and through the blog and uh, called me and we set up a date to go triking and he called the other people that were trikers in his area and they, uh, they joined us and we went on a trike ride. It was very nice. And you know, when you're traveling, sometimes it gets very lonely. I don't, David, you probably run into this. Um, and it's it's always good to connect with with people and uh, find your tribe. So we finished our three months tour and got back to our own tribe back on the Withlacoochee Strait Trail. These folks are absolutely wonderful. We have been riding with them for ten years, and. Um, so that ends the first book, but then it starts another chapter in that I continued the journey with the dementia and with biking. So this is the uh, first book, Alzheimer's Tripping with George, and I couldn't decide on a cover. Some of the bikers and friends that I um, surveyed like this cover. Next slide. And some of them like this cover. So I couldn't decide. So I am using both covers. So if you go up to buy the book, just know it's the same book, two different covers. Next slide. We got so much support. We continued to ride the with the Coochie Trail, and uh, George was able to continue riding. We were doing exercises to keep him mobile as much as possible, walking and balance and exercises. Um, uh, but it, there came a point in uh, the end of 2017 when he, you know, crossing intersections, he was forgetting how to shift. He was losing that ability even on our trip in 2016. Um, but 
uh, when you come to a stop sign and try to get going again, if you're in the wrong gear, it's really tough. And sometimes we'd all be yelling at him, pedal, 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 because there's cars coming. And he would just freeze in the middle of the street. And there's cars stopping. And I have to get off my trike and push him out of the through the intersection. So um, but my friends on the bike trail were really supportive. Uh, one of the guys has an electric assistant. He would ride back with George side by side and keep him company and go his pace. And I could zip along in front with everybody else and do, get my social and get my exercise. And then on the way home, I'd ride with George and the other guy could get his exercise. So it was very supportive atmosphere. Around Christmas time, a friend in the bike group and says, I want to buy George electric assist. Now, isn't that heart, uh, I started crying. It was just awful. It was just wonderful. I mean, <laughs> it was just wonderful. Um, and I said, well, it's kind of scary him having electric assist because if he gets in front of me, I lose him. Um, so I started thinking about a tandem. And uh, you'll recognize that as Regis Hampton sitting on the trike. Uh, his wife, Cindy Hampton, donated uh, Green Speed and Neura. And so then all I had to do was shop for the uh, other, um, the front half because they're the front wheel comes off and they hook together and you've got a tandem. These are Delta trikes yes. uh, to, to be yes. clear. And that the, that's why you were able to do this. Okay. Yeah. Let's yeah. take a look here. Go ahead. So as they're putting on, as you saw in the past slide, let's go back. Let's go back to the back slide. Um, as Bill is trying to put the, uh, you know, the motor on, it's one of those cog uh, runs. It's a BAMP. A fang, not a vamp, a bafang. Um, and the steering mechanism goes from the front fork to the handlebar underneath the seat. And it was in the way. This this motor was going to really interfere with the steering. So we're trying to puzzle over how to fix that. Okay, next slide. So they turned the boom around, upside down. Next slide. And then uh, this brand new trike that we just got. Oh, I didn't mention that the, the trike we ordered for the front, this red one, um, I ordered from the hostel shop in Stevens Point, Wisconsin. And uh, uh, Rolf, we have biked with him and Barbara several times. George and him had bonded over running small businesses. Um, and so I called him up before I hit the order button online and I said and I explained what was going on and he says well let me see what I can do so he gave me a deal on, on the trike uh, but then I get this brand new trike it's sent to Regis Regis assembles it and here he is starting to saw it and I'm kind of nervous about it but it worked out great next slide There it is with the, the fang on the top. And the Next slide. So uh, they had to do some work on it. Uh, we came back uh, one day uh, when we were going to be riding it. And here is a lot of the people from the bike group greeting us as we pull into the driveway at Regis's house. Isn't that awesome? Um, such community. And even Larry Varney there. Who is that at the <laughs> end on the left side there? You know, Larry Varney was there. It's awesome. Um, so we got to go on our very first ride. And uh, there's Larry. There's Larry, Larry, do you remember that? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I do remember it. Uh, um, I kept thinking I wished I could have done more to help other than take pictures and and luckily, somebody took a picture and I was in it. But uh, uh, I remember that day quite well. Yeah. Very nice. All right. Let's go back to the slideshow. Um, so we took our uh, virgin ride uh, in those bikers that you see as some of them rode with us back to our home there. Next slide. 
Here we are in the mics. Next and now slide. they're hooked up, right? Those are the those yeah, are hooked they're up. hooked up. Yeah, uh -huh. you take off the front wheel of the back trike and hook it up. Yep. Okay. Um, okay, so uh, the next day or two, we had our virgin uh, ride with the group, and it was hard because I um, there are different levels of speed on that buffang, and um, the the level I had it set at was wrong because uh, I think there's a there's a you can set it where it has nine different levels. You can set it with five different levels and three different levels, I think. And I had it set at five levels and it was uh, there was too big a difference between level one and level two. I mean, I I would uh, really have to pedal hard and push hard to stay up with the group on level one. But if I put it on level two, I had a hard time staying back with them. Um, and then on the way home, it was just really hard to pedal. It was just so hard. And then the power ran out and it turned out I had a flat tire. Another thing that was happening on this Virgin ride was that all of a sudden I'd be riding along and all of a sudden the steering bar, the handlebars would turn. Boom! They would turn. And um, for no, and I'd still be going straight, but the tr handlebars would be like against my <laughs> my left thigh, and it was just crazy. And it, so we thought that it was the steering bar, the the one that runs next to the boom, and goes from the uh, the handlebar to the fork. Yeah, there. So we kept on tightening that, and tightening that, and tightening that, and it still would happen. And I was just so puzzled. <laughs> so that was uh, the skid mark was us uh, arriving home and we, it just sent us right into the bushes because it turned and the wheel turned too. It was just bizarre. So what um, happened? Well, we took it to Trailside Bike and right here there is a genius with recumbents, uh, person with personality, but <laughs> plus, and he, uh, he's great with recumbent trikes. And he figured out and they'd forgotten the shims, the shims that go uh, in the, around the boom, where the boom goes in female, goes in the male part, and they forgot the shims. And the torque was so bad with all that wrenching that we were doing that he Greg had to take it to an automotive uh, body shop and get the boom straightened. It had bent the boom. Wow. Yeah, there was just something, but he fixed it and it's solid. And uh, and we wrote it then very successfully after that. We set the level for nine levels that allowed us to ride at level two and keep up with the group. Level three, if we had to catch up to them, uh, it worked out really well. And we got um, Larry Hobbs, who uh, is on, telling us that that is an issue with Anuras, as it, uh, as it turns out, I guess. So thanks, Larry. Yeah. I have some friends who's, uh, uh, who ride tandem. Her husband is blind, uh, and Connie Tice, and they had the same thing. And they put bolts, they actually put holes through the boom, yeah. which I was afraid to do. And I'm glad that Greg didn't do that. He, um, he went with the shims, and that worked right. out really well. And we kept riding that trike. Then after they got it fixed, it worked very well. And... Uh, Turned Greg out to be able, the solution you were looking for then, didn't yes, it? Yes, because we were able to go like 40 miles and we just keep going. And uh, he was shattering me, so George was happy. I was, right. He was behind me. He was happy. And, and I you was always happy. knew that he was behind you when you had that set Yeah, up. yeah, yeah. That's so I didn't great. have to worry about him. All right. um, I did learn to take a diaper bag with me. <laughs> of course. That was one of the things we were, were dealing with all the time. Uh, let's go to the next slide. While I was having this tandem, while we were riding the tandem, my friends, Deborah Alford and Glenn Alford, uh, were just so wonderful and generous to the, us through the whole thing. And uh, and they're with it with the Coochie Bicycle Riders also. Anyway, um, they says, well, why don't you get your bike painted while you're riding the tandem? Because it's the trike's just sitting in the garage. And I thought, well, I'm just so overwhelmed with caregiving. I can't be fiddling with this, you know, bike. And so they took it to their house and took it all apart 
and replace some of the parts that were worn. And uh, and Deborah bagged all the parts and took pictures so that they would get it back together exactly the way it was supposed to be. And Glenn just, you know, polished everything up and fixed everything. It was just amazing. And so then I took it to a powder coat paint place in um, in Inverness and they painted it and to match my fenders, which I've had that way for quite a while. Um, so it's just beautiful and I love it. And uh, it's a beautiful trike. We yeah. saw that while you're down there. Very yeah. nice. All right. So George was able to ride with uh, that tandem. He was able to ride to the day before he passed away. It was amazing because uh, dementia, you have a hard time keeping balance. You have a hard time walking sometimes. And he uh, could hardly move his feet at times, but he'd get in next to that trike and he could lift that leg way up over the boom and sit down. <laughs> it's just amazing. And when did George pass away? May 20th, uh, 2018. Okay, just of last so, year. Yeah, yeah. And so um, uh, at just before he passed, Cindy called me and says, you know, after George is done using the trike, let's just keep the bike I'm not getting any younger. And we're all going to, we're all temporarily able. And I, I thought that was a great idea. So now it's called the George. And it's a project of the Withlacoochee Bicycle Riders. And right here is Glenn and Deborah riding it. Glenn broke his leg right after George passed. and. And here he is in recovery, riding the back of the trike, and Deborah's taking him. So the uh, group has made this available then to whoever yes, wants to read it. What yes, a wonderful and, idea. Yeah, it is just awesome. Next slide. Oops, that was my back. Yeah, go the other way. There we there go. There we go. There's the picture that Larry Varney took of us as we were heading home on our Virgin ride that day um, that we first rode that tri uh, the trike. Uh, and and, uh, and it c continues. And this is the one with the story about the tandem, um, a story about all the adventures that we went on uh, in the last few years of George's life. And so let's be real clear about this, Susan, so everyone understands. So this is the next book? Yes, this is right. the next book. And it's coming out this early summer, early June. Oh, okay, you kind of broke up there a little bit. Did you say this summer in June, yes? Yes. All mm -hmm. right. Mm -hmm. And is that the last slide? Okay. Thank you, Trey. Um, okay, let's go back to Susan for a second and kind of finish up with a couple questions that I, I have. So, um, so the timeline and all this, so we have the book, uh, the published book that I showed everyone at the beginning, Alzheimer's Tripping with George, this one right here that people can buy on uh -huh. Amazon right now. And then uh, 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 with that book, you have something special coming up this coming week. Tell us about that. Yes, thank you for mentioning that. On um, the 21st, the Kindle is launching uh, down from Amazon. And so it's available for pre-orders right now, only $2.99. The price goes up after launch, so get yours now. Um, and in the Kindle, the ebook, you'll have the color pictures in color. In the paperback book, uh, there's tons of pictures, but they're all in black and white and they're kind of fuzzy and stuff. But you'll have better pictures in the Kindle and you'll be able to, to see um our journey through the cat trike we went and visited on that journey we were with sylvia up in portland uh riding among the homeless tents sylvia uh, halpern yes yeah sylvia halpern. um and so that's the first book and that is launching in kindle on uh, this thursday and then on the 23rd if you're in the inverness area come we're going to celebrate on march 23rd at 10 o'clock at cattle dog in in Inverness on top very so, good and, and then uh, and then in June will be that second book and that'll be the paperback version of that second book in June yes yes all right yes, so we have so, all yeah. the timeline clear on that I will put all those links in the description below of course so that everybody can uh, take advantage of either buying paperbacks or the Kindle version if they like or both you know who knows wonderful story um Susan let me ask one or two more follow-up questions here. Uh, what sticks in my mind? Be, I'm sorry, go ahead. Okay. I wanted to let people know too that the, the journey continues. I hope to make this a, this a tripping series. And I hope that following 
that I will do some trips on my trike. Um, and instead of using crazy guy on a bike, I will use my blog, which is susanstraley.com. So, okay. So That's go up there and click the join tab. And so you'll be notified when I do that. We will do that, of course. Let's just uh, finish up with a question about caregiving, because I think that's really the, the most uh, striking thing to me. Um, you, you talked about when you first found out about George's diagnosis and the, your first thought was to run. And I don't know who wouldn't think that, but you didn't run. And I want to know what you have to share with those uh, who will encounter this, uh, this diagnosis with a loved one. It's going to happen to many of the people that are watching um, uh, right now. So how would you advise them? And I know everyone's different, so you can't, uh, you can't always be giving advice to every single person. But how would you advise the person who got this horrible news to, uh, to carry on? How, do you, how would you advise them? Oh, boy. Find a tribe. First of all, find support. Um, hang on to their support. Gather them around you. But also... Um, George, when we got married, actually, I had told him, even as we were saying the vows, I was kind of laughing, you know, in sickness and health, because I had told him before and after the vows that I wasn't hanging out if he got sick. But we were married 40 years, almost 40 years. And when um, I started worrying about the finance, the financial end of this prospect, because the projection of someone with Alzheimer's is they usually end up in nursing care, and that's $8,000 to $13,000 a month. And some people end up there for 10 years. What would happen to me and my, you know, the nest egg would be gone. I would be in poverty, or I don't know how I would survive. Because um, we had a small business. I didn't have a pension. I had this nest egg. Um, so I was very scared of that. And so I mentioned to him our pact and that we were going to get divorced, divorced just for financial reasons. I'd be there to support him and love him, but uh, I wanted to separate the finances. And he started crying, and he, he was very proud of our relationship. And he says, can we wait till after our 40th wedding anniversary? And I says, okay. So that's when I started. So I thought, okay, let's make it a big, happy ending. And But as we were going along and I was easing into the caregiving role, it got harder to say adios, you know. It, it was... And so, and so you time, never did, as it turns no, out. I never did. did. So you never, I never could, did. Never it did. was an emotional decision, yeah, not a yeah. logical all right, really good advice there. Anyways, as best as you can do, everyone has yeah. to has to travel their own uh, path, don't they, yeah, when absolutely. they get to that point? So, all right. Um, anything else, Susan? Before we leave you here, do you have any final uh, thoughts or words for us? Oh, I do. Wait, 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 wait. Go ahead. Oh well, to twelve days of cycling in Inverness. If you're in the area, it's exciting. Our our little town is having twelve days of cycling. And you can go up to the City of Inverness website and look it up. We're going to have races. We're going to have the clean air ride. And Bike Florida is coming through. All right. I'm sure Denny's going to take part in that. He's right there, too. So, mm -hmm. all right. Susan Straley, thank you so much for uh, sharing your story with us. We will uh, look forward to uh, the Kindle version of your book and, and, the next, uh, and the next book coming out. So we hope to see you again. Thanks for coming on the Laid Back Bike Report. All right, and uh, and and Susan will not be uh, playing guitar on the way out uh, today. I don't think so. <laughs> we'll move along. Thanks, Susan. All right, folks. Uh, I would like to talk to you about our wonderful sponsors that make this uh, show possible. TerraCycle, first of all, from fairings to headrests, whatever accessory you need, padding crew, they've got you covered. And. Yes, trailside.bike. If you find yourself in Florida near the Withlacoochee Trail that Susan was just talking about, stop in to see Andrew and his crew. And Cruise Bike. Their patented race and record-proven front-wheel drive geometry changes the rules of cycling. Now, comfort doesn't come at the cost of performance. But fair warning, your cheeks may hurt from smiling. And Lightning Cycles, 
surprising speed, comfort, and agility, featuring the superior climbing quality that you've been looking for. Check out Lightning Recumbents today. All right, guys. Um, let me bring you up to date on uh, what's going on uh, with the Laidback Bike Report. Uh, as many of you know, if you follow us on our Facebook uh, page, we have uh, recently returned from some serious traveling. We have been uh, to uh, Colorado and Florida and Texas, and we have shot a ton of video. And uh, it was all in the can until I started having a chance to uh, edit it uh, a couple weeks ago. The first thing we put out is bicycle evolution as you can see there we got three videos out of our visit with our pal uh, doug davis um there was a visit to the texas velomobile showroom where we uh, got a tour from doug around uh, the new shop and he talked about what his uh, ideas were uh for his new shot uh new shop we had uh, also velomobiles 101 with mr wizard that second video is kind of an intensive look at uh, the Velmobiles that uh, Doug had on hand. We looked uh, inside to see uh, what is uh, actually inside of a Velmobile, how you steer them, where uh, the gearing is, and it's something that not a lot of people know about. It was really interesting stuff. So that's Velmobiles 101 with Mr. Wizard. And lastly, Gary rides a P38 at Bicycle Evolution Fitness Center. You can back up a little bit, guys. We're getting a little ahead of ourselves there. Yep. And uh, that's not me on a P38, obviously, but uh, there's a, a little video of me with uh, Coach Wharton, who uh, works at Bicycle Evolution, uh, showing me uh, how you go on the trainer and how you can increase your fitness level. Uh, kind of interesting stuff. That's all packed into some of what uh, Doug uh, has plans for as the whole package in Bicycle Evolution. So uh, we hope you take a look at those videos. And then uh, late last week, I was able to get to work on the Hot Rally video that we shot. Now, we spent a couple weeks ago, we were in back in Texas uh, and in the Fort Worth area. And uh, we got a chance to uh, to attend the Hot Rally. Larry Varney was there as well. We had a great time. It was chilly, to say the least, as you can see from the 16 layers that I'm wearing there on that trike among the uh, lots of fun things that happened they had the uh, they had the texas trike shootout where they put the ice vtx against the bachetta ct 2.0 and uh, we raced those back and forth uh, also uh, larry seidman was there at racing we had a ton of fun so the main hot rally video is up now you can take a look at that it's a lot of fun to watch also shot video of mark swanson's uh talk uh at uh, what they call bent U. So it was a talk about the Bichetta and basically about the carbon fiber frame uh, that they're using for their new CT 2.0 that's coming out in May. So you might want to take a look at that video. And Pat Franz, our buddy Pat Franz was there. He had an interesting talk about his accessories and parts and not just his actually, but everybody's what you can do to really deck out your, your uh, bent uh, for um, anything you might need. So that was interesting. And also, uh, next slide, I think we have a picture of the Eola. Yeah, there was a raffle there that uh, that got a lot of participation. And there's the new Catrack Eola that was just actually released to the public. And you can go buy those now. Very popular um, a, a new trike. And uh, Catrack was there um, and showing it off. People were getting test rides. And uh, yeah, someone won one of those uh, there. So lots of fun. Uh, take a look at the uh, hot rally videos that we posted. We've got a lot more videos coming up, uh, guys, We uh, from the travels that I just talked about. Uh, so you want to come on back to me, uh, although the next one is a cat trike. Uh, oh, yeah. Let's take a look. Yeah, there's the, uh, the parade, the crazy uh, parade at the hot rally, too. I think, is that the last one? Yeah. Oh, yeah. And there's the uh, the last scene from it. There's some of the folks that were involved that you can very see. Very warm. It was a quite a warm. Yeah, it was hot. No, no doubt about it. All right. So, yeah, we got lots more videos coming up uh, from our travels. Uh, we got a cat trike video coming up. Trident uh, trikes. Uh, Bichetta. We met with Bichetta. We have some interesting uh, video of that. Uh, Trailside.bike, we were there visiting, and uh, Angle Tech uh, in Colorado. So look for those in the coming weeks as soon as I can get uh, enough time in the editing suite. We'll get those out as quickly as we can. All right, some announcements, folks. I uh, I got a message uh, from our pal uh, Larry Black at uh, Mount Airy Bicycles in Maryland, and he says, 
I have a pair of trice, XLNT custom trikes that are time capsules, preserved like showroom pieces, and I don't ever recall them being ridden. We will offer one of these collector pieces for what was the original price of $5,400 from approximately 2004, and they're going to keep the other one for their recumbent museum. The one with the specially embellished lug work is $5,600, but both are virtual one of a kind. Without the schlump, the buyer can uh, take a couple hundred bucks off, Larry says. There was no stone unturned and no box left unchecked when these were ordered. So they're beautiful pieces. Um, and if you're interested in that, uh, please contact uh, Larry at Mount Airy. And I'll put that uh, link down below so you guys can uh, you guys can contact him. Also, from uh, our, one of our viewers, Joshua Bradley, contacted me through Facebook. And he says, the Sequoia Gravel Adventure, which is going to be Friday, April 12th through Sunday, April 14th, has added a trike category in the 29 and 54 mile options. This is a gravel ride through the most beautiful terrain Oklahoma has to offer. Rolling hills, low water crossings, and a pine hardwood forest. Sports Crafters is giving away two recumbent stationary trainers, and Terra Trike is giving away uh, 10 $30 coupons. So if you guys are kind of interested, that's an intriguing new uh, concept, I think. Uh, gravel uh, riding, especially with bents, it's an up-and-coming thing. And I wanted to take a few minutes uh, to, uh, to let uh, Trey and maybe Larry also talk to you about uh, some of the uh, some of the incursions that bents are making into gravel uh, riding. Uh, Trey's been interested in this in this in a while uh, for a while I know and, and talked to me about it. Trey, tell us what you know about uh, bent uh, gravel grinders. Well it's um, I don't know a whole lot about the bents other than there's there's been several guys on various forums that have been participating in adventure slash gravel type riding. I've noticed that here in our local area that um, gravel riding seems to be overtaking road riding um, for various reasons. We've had some accidents. People are always hesitant to ride on the roads. We've got some nice trails, but when you ride faster, it seems like, you know, the trails don't always seem to apply. So it seems it kind of started a little bit with cyclocross. They've had a race here for a couple of years, and now lately gravel is just all anybody talks about. Um, there's a couple of local folks that have put on a, a series that uh, offers various rides, and I was able to go out and uh, provide support and SAG just to see what it was all about. So we were discussing um, the type of bikes they ride and things like that, and I mentioned we ride recumbents, and and I was kind of surprised in that he was uh, interested. He said that would be really cool if we had recumbents that would be interested in uh, participating. So, of course, you know, any excuse to get another trike, I'm, I'm all for. And it doesn't necessarily have to be a trike. So I started doing a little research, and I've noticed that uh, there are some folks that have done various races. Uh, recumbents are included in various gravels, and it seems to be two-wheel trikes and not trikes, at least the, the ones that are written about lately. I think the trikes are going to start getting a little more popular, but I think if, if people can solve the issues of a trike, um, the, the biggest issues I see is, is when you, if you watch or read about any of these gravel events, you'll notice that the bikes are riding in the ruts of the cars or their trucks or whatever that have been going by. So with the trike, obviously that's going to be an issue. So throw in some of these events, uh, they ride rain or shine. So if it pours down rain, if it's blazing hot, they're going to ride. It doesn't matter. So if it's muddy, then you've got, you've got an issue of, of you're not going to be riding in the same rut. So you may have a, a little bit more difficult time. But I've noticed that um, it does seem to be getting really popular. So I'm going to try. Um, I don't know when. I'm in the process of, of converting one of my trikes to a, quote, gravel trike. Uh, I just got some tires in yesterday. Um, I've already got a, uh, a gravel base tire on the back and I ordered some for the front. Um, but I'm going to, I'm going to try to give it a try. And, um, if, if folks want to see some more, there's an off-road section of Bent Rider online. And there's a couple of people there that are doing this. Um, there's a, a manufacturer that's making some custom carbon frame, 
uh, two wheel recumbents and there's a gentleman there that seems to be riding them and doing really well um, especially when you consider or you look at some of his videos he's riding over some things that like boulders and trees and things like that that I wouldn't feel comfortable riding across on a regular mountain bike so I think it's a possibility I think it's something that could be done and I think it'd be a great area for recumbents to get involved with um, Larry you got something I, to add I was just going to say uh, there's more gravel races catching on here in Colorado. I think just from a race director's point of view, they're starting to do these, they call them grand fondos, and it's just 50 miles, 100 miles, and it's easier for them as far as permitting if they can find long dirt roads rather than closing off paved roads with lots of cars, and it's also safer. I haven't seen any recumbents involved yet, but it would be cool if it catches on with recumbents. That sounds great. Um, Trey, do you have those guys uh, from the, that you saw on Bent Rider? Do you have their names handy? And maybe there's guys that we can try to get on and we can talk more about this. Yeah, I was going to bring it. Uh, I actually closed that screen. Give me one second. Um, his, there's a gentleman from Canada um, uh, that's actually doing the riding. Here, I've got it here. Larry Elliman. Yeah. Ehrlichman, can, right? Is it Ehrlichman? Ehrlichman. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. He is the one that's riding the, uh, I think it's called a Kodiak that uh, John Marsigliano, I believe that's how you pronounce it, is is making. And I, I think, think it was Marsiglio. Was, was it Marsiglio? Marsiglio. Marsiglio. That's right. I don't have it in front of me. Um, he is riding um, one that's called, I think, a Thunderbolt, a Kodiak Thunderbolt, um, if I get that word right. But he's he's the one that's got the videos online uh and he seems to be the one that's promoting it or not necessarily promoting he's just reporting his his racing and riding more so um and it's a really interesting bike so i think it'd be cool um yeah i kind of get the gravel folks together uh and, and see how they how they do it and what they do it and what their suggestions are yeah it seems like a really interesting alternative to uh trails uh, which you know people ride trails to avoid riding in in the street there's other reasons of course but they ride trails uh, one of the reasons is to avoid riding in the street and uh, yeah gravel riding gravel roads if they're available in your area seems like another good alternative if you have the right trike or bike so um yeah. we'll look into that see what we can find anything else that, guys on this that'd be good and one thing one thing I'm, i'd like to point out is that when you think about gravel at least around here we live in mississippi so i grew up riding gravel roads you know in cars and motorcycles and bicycles so the when people envisioned gravel, they kind of envisioned some logging road. But from what I've seen of the races here, the roads are really well kept. And the other important thing is, is they're low travel. There's not a lot of traffic on these roads and you're going through just really scenic backlands. I mean, you know, farm country and, and just you're seeing a lot more than riding in a city street with, you know, cars and trucks and things zooming by you. So. But anyway, that's absolutely true. Yeah, that sounds like a great idea. Something really worth uh, looking into, I think, Trey. So, cool. all right, folks, uh, let's move on to uh, let's move on to next month on the next on the next laid back bike report. We are talking. Let's see, April fourteenth at uh, back to our two p.m. Eastern Daylight Time regular time, and we are going to have a couple of guests on that uh, I think will be intriguing. Uh, first, uh, Inner Tuba. Inner Tuba. Uh, it's my buddy John Hodkin. Can we go to that slide? You guys can have a look at uh, uh, Trey is kind of busy with uh, getting out of his little talk there, but he'll, we'll have it up in a second. Uh, John Hodkin is a uh, is a Scotsman uh, who tours the UK on his uh, ice trike and trailer. Uh, as you can see there, John is an amazing fella. He travels all around uh, England, Scotland. Uh, and goes to um, goes to schools and civic centers, community centers. He d puts on performances with his tuba, which is what he carries in that uh, in that big trailer, and teaches the kids uh, uh, about uh, music and talks about his travels. It's all done on his trike. Uh, an amazing fella. And the the really interesting thing is John is coming to the U.S. this summer. He is going to be doing an extensive tour in Iowa. And he will be traveling, doing the same types of things that he does in the UK. And he's also going to be including Ragbri on his agenda, if you can believe it. So, yes, he'll be doing that week across Iowa. 
And if uh, traveling with that trailer and the trike isn't enough with the tuba in it, he's going to be putting on performances uh, for the riders and I think at the little towns. Uh, amazing fella. You will love John. He's so much fun to talk to. So tune in uh, next month uh, to meet uh, John Hodkin, Inner Tuba. And we also have another very special guest. Kyle Bryant will be joining us. A gentleman I've had my eye on for a while. He is the subject of an award-winning documentary called The Ataxian. Uh, many of you may have already uh, watched this, um, this documentary. It's a wonderful piece. Um, I'm very excited to have Kyle on. He completed um, RAM a number of years ago, and he is fighting Frederick's ataxia, um, which affects his balance and strength. It's a musculoskeletal neuromuscular disease. Um, we are very excited to have Kyle on to talk to you about how he has overcome uh, what, what many people would consider an extraordinary uh, drawback uh, to their activities. So we're looking forward to having Kyle and John on next month. We hope you'll join us. Okay, guys. So as I've mentioned during the show, uh, we're going to have a lot of links from today's show from uh, both uh, David and Susan. And you're going to be able to find the links in the description below. And here's what it looks like. You'll take a look here on the slide. We will have the links and we will also, of course, have our clickable table of contents. On the table of contents, we will break up the show into sections so you can jump back and forth between everything and see it all. So uh, you can always find those at the bottom of our, um, of our videos on YouTube. I want to thank uh, Brian Ball, who is not able to make it today, and Bent Rider for their promotional assistance uh, every show. We really appreciate uh, uh, Brian's help. I want to thank my wonderful panelists who will step up and step in uh, to help out when uh, maybe somebody doesn't show up. They'll step into that job. And when the host uh, suddenly disappears, they still step up and help out. So, guys, thank you so much for everything you do you know, all month long, not just during the shows. Denny, thanks, pal, for I don't know what you did because I wasn't there, but I bet it was great. So thank you uh, for that. So, yeah, to my panelists. And, uh, folks, I want to thank uh, – come on back to me if you would uh, – yeah, I want to thank all of you for watching and sticking with us, especially when we have a few uh, technical difficulties. We appreciate you guys staying with us. We hope you enjoyed uh, the show today and the shows we put on uh, for you. So here's what else you can do to help us out. Again, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Click that little uh, green logo uh, in the lower right-hand corner there uh, that you see and uh, subscribe, hit the notification bell. You can like us on Facebook. Uh, that would help us out. And head to our website, uh, laidbackbikereport.com. You see a picture of the head page right there. You can, uh, you can go to laidbackbikereport.com. You can click on the little white eye that you see in the upper right-hand corner right now, and that will take you directly there as well. At our website, you are going to see uh, right below my big face there, you're going to see all of our sponsors. Those are clickable links to every one of our sponsors that have been on the shows or help us in our events. Please support those guys. Uh, they make all of this possible. Uh, also, you can go to our, you'll see our most recent show listed on the front page, our upcoming show. And then we have uh, a next, we have other pages for past shows and bonus material. And you can also sign up for our mailing list where I'll send out usually just once a month a, uh, an email to bring you up to date on what's going on when our next show is and such. The other thing you can do, of course, is you can buy a hat. Why wouldn't you? Wouldn't you like to look just like that? 20 bucks plus $5 shipping and handling. You can do that on the bottom of that front page of the website. Larry Varney, looking dapper as always. So thanks. It's all, folks, at laidbackbikereport.com. So until our next webcast, from all of us at the Laidback Bike Report, so long, bent riders.